Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today's video isn't going to be on any of the builds. It's going to be kind of a, a, a novice's introduction into TIG welding. And um, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'd have seen that I have got quite a bit of aluminium to weld up. So I had to get going in terms of learning how to TIG. Um, so this is kind of going to be my view of the, of well, I guess my tips on how to start um, based on what I've read, because I'm sure a bunch of you who are looking into doing TIG welding, you're going to watch numerous YouTube videos and read stuff. I did the same. And then what I've learned in the limited amount of time I've been welding, which is a couple of weeks. Um, I guess the first thing, and probably the most important thing in my opinion, is to get comfortable. If you're uncomfortable, it's, just, it's, it's not going to go down well. Um, TIG and aluminium, especially thin wall stuff, is frustrating. Um, and this video is, is I guess, trying to help you minimize the frustration but you are going to get frustrated because it is it's, it's annoying at times because things just don't quite go to plan um anyway number one is comfortable you've got to be comfortable so sit in a chair that's comfortable make sure your pedal is at a point where you mean you can you can modulate the pedal quite easily um another silly one is wear comfortable shoes and as silly as that sounds um when I started it was really cold in the garage so I was wearing kind of thick workshop boots and I, I felt I had control of the of the pedal but after changing to just normal trainers it was, it was like night and day in terms of the controllability of, of the pedal so yeah get comfortable make sure you've got lots of light um, lighting up your workspace um, so before you strike an arc you, you know where you are you can see what you're doing again making yourself comfortable it helps to have like props like this to hold things in place because again remember you're using both hands and your feet to do this so you haven't got a lot of resource to hold things down so this is good for ho holding pipe and stuff in place and have lots of random bits to kind of help prop up um, and some heavy stuff to help hold things down if needed but you get you kind of get the idea um, what else? Obviously make sure you've got the right protective equipment. So that's a welding helmet, gloves. Um, another thing that I bought is this thing here. So basically you can put it in your two fingers. I think it's called the weld finger or something. I can't remember now. But basically you kind of put it there and it allows you to rest on something warm and then slide your hand across. That has come in useful. It stops you getting burnt because it does get hot. Right, what else was on my list? Next important thing is to make sure whatever you're welding, especially when aluminium is clean. Clean is your best friend. Um, if it's got any kind of coating on it, um, any oil or residue, it's gonna make the welding uh, not go to plan. So make sure you clean it thoroughly. Um, I use uh, a wire brush and acetone. That seems to work quite well. With thin wool stuff like this, I think this is, um, 1.6 mil thick. Um, I don't V groove. I literally just butt them up um, as close as I can, making sure the fitment is nice and weld from there. Um, with anything thick, like some three or four mil plate, I will put a V groove in it. Um, and with cast iron, so not cast iron, cast aluminium, I will definitely put a groove in it because it's quite thick and you want to make sure you've got penetration and a good, a good bit of new material in there. But I guess if you follow all that, you're kind of in a good position to start. Um, the next, I guess, obstacle is kind of working out your machine settings, which can be a little bit daunting at times because there's lots of buttons and lots of flashing lights. And this is a, an inverter machine, so it's got some additional functionality like advanced waves, um, uh, and pulse settings, etc., etc., which were all great, but in my opinion, they just confused the hell out of me in the beginning because I started trying to think the reason why it wasn't working is because I wasn't using these advanced features. Whereas it's probably best, in fact, I'd say it's almost certainly best to learn the basics first without all the additional stuff. Then you can utilize that stuff um, after because there's too many, there's too many variables. You adjust um, amperage, slope, um, frequency, AC balance, tungsten stick out, tungsten angle, 
torch angle and it all becomes too much you adjust a few things and you don't know where you've gone wrong and what's gone wrong so keep it simple to begin with and then just adjust one thing at a time if things aren't quite working and see if that makes it better or worse and then if that's not improving things then move on to something else right and it's even stuff like uh, maximum amperage so you might watch a few videos on youtube um and you'll see people's settings on thimble aluminium and they'll be saying they're using like 100 to 150 amps as, as the maximum amperage and you're thinking to yourself that's quite a lot and if i use that amount of amperage i'll probably blow through the material well that's that is right but um what in my opinion that relates to is the percentage increase in amperage over the the kind of movement of the pedal so for example if you set your maximum amperage to 150 amps a 10 percent um movement of the th of the i was about to say throttle there of the pedal um relates to 15 amps because if you change your maximum amperage to 10 amps so to 100 amps then a 10 percent movement relates to 10 amps so if you prefer to have a little pedal movement relate to more amperage set your maximum amperage to higher and vice versa um i'm kind of somewhere in the middle if i'm doing thin wall i might set it to 100 125 amps just so i've got that controllability so a little movement gets a, a reasonable amount more amperage into it um what else that pedal also on the whole maximum amperage um topic um I know I, when I started, I was, I was trying to, I wouldn't say skip the process, but I was trying to figure out why, if, if I'm welding thin wall, I don't know, 1.6 mil aluminium, what's the maximum amperage I can apply to that before it kind of blows through? So let's say that's, I don't know, that's 70, 80 amps. Um, I then thinking, what? Well, okay, so I can set my machine to 70 or 80 amps and then just crack on. And no matter what I do, I'm not gonna blow through it and it should be fine. Um, the problem is it doesn't quite work that way. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like cruise control, which is which is a bit of a weird um, uh, comparison to make. And what I mean by by comparing it um, to cruise control is cruise control only works when you're kind of steady state. So if you're going down a motorway um, and you're, you want to do a constant speed, um, you flip cruise control on, set it to seventy miles an hour, obeying the speed limit at all times, of course, and that's it. You can you can cruise long and not have to worry too much now if the speed limit changes obviously clearly need to alter your cruise control but if you start going around loads of bends and stuff and having to brake and stuff there's no point using cruise control because it's way too dynamic um cruise control is all about a steady state um and welding is kind of like that um in the sense that it's quite dynamic um so you can't really use cruise control too much if you've got something which is quite thick and quite flat yeah, you can get a steady rhythm and you, it's as close as to cruise control as you can get. But other than that, you're dealing with thin material, heat management, the material's getting too hot or it's too cold, or you're trying to weld around the circumference of a circle or whatever it might be. So it becomes very dynamic. So you need that pedal to be able to control the amount of heat you're putting into the material. Um, so trying to set a maximum amperage and think that you can get away with just using that and just pumping your pedal down and then it should be fine, just won't work. Um, you might be able to get it to work on the, on the thick, flat stuff, but anything else, it just won't work. So you kind of, your pedal's your best friend um, and you need to learn how to control the pedal. So it doesn't really matter what you set your maximum amperage to because you should be using your, your eyes to look at the puddle and the puddle tells you everything you need to know. If it's not puddling up, then there's no, not enough heat in there. If the puddle's starting to dip down and it all seems to be turning into molten, clearly you're putting too much heat in, so back off. Um, I don't know. Actually, at one point I might actually test it. I might actually put a camera on the on the um, on the machine to see how much I'm actually using because it tells you on the, on the on the display how much amperage is actually going into uh, the material. Um, it'd be an interesting thing to to, to watch, but I, I I don't know because I'm again I'm I'm concentrating on what the puddle's doing. I'm adjusting my pedal based on what the puddle's doing. Um, again, that comes into play, um, for example, if you're welding cast aluminium, this is a bit I did earlier, just a test. Um, obviously, you've got lots of impurities in the material. So y you're not lo looking to get a neat kind of weld. Obviously, you'd like to get a neat weld, but what you're trying to do is get all the impurities out 
and to the top so you can replace all that crap with fresh new clean metal or aluminium should I say so again try and just go in there crack on with your maximum amperage and then kind of work your way along isn't going to work you're going to have to pause stop back up um increase the amperage decrease the amperage based on what that puddle's doing if you're seeing lo loads of crap coming to the top you need to wait make sure that crap comes to the top and then move move on if the puddle's not flowing you're just going to have to hang around for a little while and wait for that puddle to to create to, to form and to start to flow so um again it's it's heat management you've got to understand what the material is doing for example um if you're welding a massive object then when you first strike that arc it's going to be cold because all that heat aluminium, aluminium is very conductive all that heat is just going to get sucked into the object so it might not start warming up until you're halfway down the world which basically means that the the, la the latter part of your world is going to be nice and strong the earlier part is cold and it's going to be weak so that's why you're going to find some people will preheat the item or preheat the, the first bit they're welding just to get that heat into it so it, so it stays stays warm the, the kind of opposite is with kind of thin wall stuff now when i first started the mistake i made is um i've got lots of pie cuts which are again thin wall 1.6 mil um aluminium to weld so i cut loads of small pieces like this which represent kind of close to what i'm going to be doing and then I started trying to weld them together and I didn't have the greatest of results. Doesn't matter what I did, I couldn't really get them to weld. Or I'd get them tacked up and it would be just okay. Um, I'd start to weld and it's, it's going okay. I'd continue on around the weld and it's looking good. And all of a sudden, massive crater, massive hole and all just falls out the bottom of it. And you're, you're like, I don't know what's happened. It was going fine. I hadn't changed anything. But the problem is, is with something this small and thin wall, there's nothing for the heat to be displaced by so this object will heat up rapidly and then it will literally just want to turn into molten and um, so you again you'll get halfway round and it will just start to just just fall out so the way around it is either one weld in very small bursts maybe i don't know a quarter of the pipe at a time but the best results i had was basically to use a bigger pipe or well not a bigger pipe a longer pipe so if I needed to weld two small things together, I'd either tack it onto a bigger piece, um, like so, and then weld, and then weld the piece I need, because then this bit acts as a heat sink, so all the heat can be displaced into this, allowing you to get a reasonable amount of this welded before it overheats. Um, so again, it, it comes down to this whole subject conversation of heat management. Um, you don't want it to be too cold, you don't want it to be too hot. Thick stuff is different to thin stuff, cast is completely different. It's just understanding what you're welding. But the thing that's consistent across the board is it's got to be clean. If it's dirty, it's just gonna make your life miserable and you're adding in variables that you, that you can't really deal with and you don't really need to. So at a starting point, if it's clean, you've got a good base. Um, you wanna put strength into that weld. Now with thin wall stuff, again, this isn't structural, this is just boost pipe. So the weld needs to be good and I need to have decent penetration but it's not, it doesn't have to be like like the strongest thing in the world because it's just gonna hold some either intake air or some boost. Whereas when I'm welding the gearbox, this has to be a strong weld. Um, this is part of the bell housing of the E36 gearbox. I've basically just cut into pieces to try and weld up and basically test. Um, now, I've got a few sections, which I don't think I've got actually on the table. Basically, the weld actually did look quite good. Um, but as soon as I put it into a vise and smashed it with a hammer, it literally broke with minimal amounts of effort. And that's really not good <coughs> for a gearbox because I don't really want that thing breaking and rotating around at X amount of 1000 RPMs in, this, in, in the transmission tunnel. Um, now, a better way of doing it, I found, again, is to V-groove. So with quite a wide angle, maybe 45 degrees. So what that enables me to do is to get down into the root and to, I've obviously cut out a lot of that material so therefore there's no contaminants because i've just cut the material out i've v-grooved it i've notched it out so therefore when i'm putting in material i'm putting in more good stuff and having to deal with less contaminants and um this this took a fair bit to crack and as you can see it hasn't cracked through the world it's cracked on the material itself so the world is strong and it's held tight and it's only welded halfway across this whole thing anyway so um that was a good world so i, I v-grooved it on this side and welded it i then on the, on the reverse side 
grooved it again, and then welded it from the from the from the backside. And that created a, a strong weld. I had to give that some some serious abuse to get it to break. And bearing in mind it wasn't even welded, kind of the whole way across. So I'm I'm happy with that. That gave me a lot more confidence to be able to weld the gearbox, knowing that it's not going to crack in two. So that's I think kind of it in terms of me talking about what I figured out, what I learned, what I read, what I think's hot and not, and etc. So what I'll do now is I will make an attempt at welding some cast aluminium, some thick plate, and some thin wall, and see how I get on. Okay, so I've got my material cut and grooved. Starting off with the cast aluminium. That's the thick plate, and then that's the thin tube. They've all been um, wire wheeled um, and cleaned with acetone. So I'll start off with the cast aluminium and my settings are, um, let's go back to the start. Pre-flow is 0.2 seconds. Uh, upslope is, so start amps are 40, 40 amps. Nothing on the upslope because I'm using the pedal. Maximum amperage is 150 amps. AC frequency is 80 hertz. AC balance is 35% cleaning. Nothing on the downslope because again, I'm using the pedal. End amp to five and post flow is three seconds. So that's what I'm going to be using for the first bit on the world, which is the cast aluminium. In terms of tungsten, I'm using a 2.4 and the uh, filler is also a 2.4 and it's the 4394, I think. Sorry, 4043. Right, we've got our three bits welded now. So starting with the cast aluminium. Doesn't look too bad, I've welded it from both sides. There wasn't that much um, gunk and crap that came up to the surface, so I think it welded okay. Hopefully, it, to me it looks quite strong, but we'll test that in a second in the vise. Next was the uh, thick plate. Um, again, looks okay. Need to work on my start and end game. But overall, not too bad. My rhythm was off on this one, so I wasn't adding filler rod um, consistently, but that side wasn't too bad. And finally, the uh, thin wall tube wasn't the greatest. Um, it's, held, it's held together, got decent penetration. Um, my issue was I think I was using the wrong size filler rod. I used the same filler rod for that as I used for that, so it was 2.4. I should have gone down to the 1.6, I believe. Um, I did actually, about three quarters of the way through, change the filler size and it started to look a bit better, better there. 
Um, but again, the problem is you put too, the, too much filler in, it basically just cools down the world too much and it starts to bunch up a little bit. I also changed the frequency to, um, that was set at 80 hertz and that was 200 hertz. So again, the lower the frequency, the wider the, the bead. So that might have been that. The reason why that didn't quite turn out was nice. So, uh, but overall, Jimmy, it's not too bad. I can't complain. So what I'll do now is get the uh, cast aluminium piece in the vise and try and break it. Right, as you can see, I managed to break it. Good news is it didn't break along the weld. It broke along the actual material edge itself. I used a similar amount of force to, to snap that bit off the actual casting as well. So um, I'm relatively happy and confident that the weld is, is strong. Um, because if I hit the material itself, it will break. If I hit at the point of the weld, again, the material will break, not the weld itself. So um, I'm good with that. Right, I've gone on for way long enough. Um, I hope this has been of some use to someone out there who's looking into uh, TIG welding, especially aluminium. Um, I started to do most of my practice ones on a small aluminium um, tube, thin wall, um, and that was again just painful. Um, again, trying to uh, understand what it's doing, when it's doing it is, is difficult in the beginning. It does get easier with time. Um, again, hopefully some of these tips are, are gonna point you in the right direction. Um, if you've got any tips to give me, feel free to um, put something in the description uh, or if you've got any questions, feel free to do so. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch up on the next update. Cheers, bye.